In ancient Egypt, a grand competition was held where racers from all over the land gathered to compete in a chariot race. The challengers poured their hearts and souls into the race, striving to be the champion. There was a man from a rare and distinguished bloodline who joined the race, and he fought hard to catch up to the top contender. He used his wit to deceive the other racers and surged ahead, taking the lead. But fate had other plans for him. As he was racing towards victory, one of the wheels on his chariot suddenly gave way, causing a catastrophic accident that ended his life in a terrible way. In modern times, an archaeologist named Carnaby is deeply invested in documenting the rich history of Egypt. However, his mother is concerned about him and calls him repeatedly, but he is dismissive of her and hung up abruptly. Despite her interruption, he continues his work, eager to unveil the secrets of the past. He leads his audience into the tomb of Princess Nefer, excited to reveal its treasures. But his excitement turns into confusion and disappointment when he realizes that the mummy is missing, and there is nothing inside the tomb. As he delves deeper into the tomb's mysteries, he discovers hidden words that lead him to a world of mummies in the afterlife. Carnaby is led by a firefly into a hidden city deep underground, where mummies live in a kingdom similar to human society on Earth. One of the inhabitants, Thut, catches his attention. Earlier, Thut was approached by many people for his signature, and a woman even questioned why he stopped racing at such a young age and why he hasn't settled down yet. Thut seemed to be struggling with the pressure of expectations from others. Thut explains that he wants others to have a fair chance at winning and that he's not interested in marriage since mum is live forever. But when he sees his younger brother staring at his old racing poster, Thut's heart is stirred. His brother urges him to return to racing, reminding him that there are still fans who support him. Thud is tempted to return, but the memory of his chariot crash reminds him of the danger and convinces him not to. While helping an old woman cross the street, Thud encounters Princess Nefer. Who narrowly avoids colliding with him. Unfortunately, the old woman's basket is destroyed in the process, but Thut gives her his own basket instead. Meanwhile, Princess Nefer sneaks into her room in the kingdom, trying to avoid the guards. However, she is caught and starts singing, revealing her identity. One of Princess Nefer's maids, Yuzi, inquires about her whereabouts, and the princess replies that she went outside for some fresh air. Princess Nefer is set to become the next pharaoh, and her father, the current pharaoh, doesn't approve of her singing, as it is not fitting for a ruler. During a grand ceremony, the pharaoh announces that the phoenix bird, guided by the goddess of love, Hathor, will choose Princess Nefer's future husband. The princess protests, stating that she needs more time before deciding to get married. She explains that she's still young and has other important things to focus on, but her father believes that being a princess comes with responsibilities, including marriage. However, he reassures her that the goddess has someone special in mind for her. Suddenly, the stargate is opened, and a magnificent phoenix appears, flying towards the kingdom. Everyone is in awe of its beauty and power. As the majestic phoenix soared over the city, it searched for the most suitable man to become Princess Nefer's husband. But as fate would have it, Thut's little brother accidentally hit the bird with his boomerang, causing it to fall into their home. The phoenix bird has chosen! The pharaoh, thinking Thut was the chosen one, sent his guards to capture him. Princess Nefer was shocked to see the man she had met the day before being taken away. At first, Thut believed it was a mistake, but then he realized he had been chosen to be Princess Nefer's husband. He tried to refuse, making excuses that he had many ailments and didn't want to get married. But when he learned that disobeying the goddess's wishes would lead to severe consequences, including losing his sight and speech, he quickly changed his mind and agreed to the marriage proposal. His only task was to safeguard the ring until the wedding day, and if anything happened to it, he would be in deep trouble. Princess Nefer and Thut had their first conversation, getting to know each other better. Despite their initial differences, they began to form a bond, and Thut realized that Princess Nefer was not like other princesses he had met before. Thut made it clear to Princess Nefer that she was not his type, and she retorted that she would rather stay single if he were the last mummy on earth. Thut was irritated that she relied on a crazy pigeon to find her a husband. In this world, people use tools to make the day into night, covering the sky with large curtains to create darkness. Thut made his way back home and had to wait until the wedding day to see Princess Nefer again. His little brother teased him about getting married soon, but he was also worried that Thut might be executed. 
However, he was excited about the prospect of becoming rich and living in a palace. They went to Thut's secret place where he kept all his trophies, including the ring he was tasked to safeguard. He locked the ring in a safe cabinet and left. But as soon as he left, a robotic control device operated by Carnaby broke into his secret place, stirring up trouble. Carnaby was on the phone when two of his team members fought over a remote control and accidentally broke everything in Thut's secret place. Thut's wedding ring fell off from the cabinet and landed in front of them. Carnaby recognized that it was a royal wedding ring and decided to keep it. He ordered the robot to take everything else, but because there were too many items to fit through the small hole, he blew up the entire wall. Thut heard the explosion and rushed to investigate. He realized that only a human could have caused this and the missing ring was a huge problem for him. He couldn't involve the royal guard or tell anyone about it, so he decided to track down Carnaby to get his ring back. He discovered a camp where Carnaby's team was keeping the ring in a crate, ready to be transported to a port. When no one was looking, Thut climbed into the vehicle carrying the ring. Thut and his brother searched the vehicle but found nothing. They had to hide in a crate when they heard someone approaching. To their surprise, Princess Nefer was on the ship with them. She thought Thut was trying to run away and had followed him all the way there. Thut revealed that he had lost the ring, which she thought was great since they wouldn't have to get married after all. At bedtime, Thut couldn't believe that a princess snored and his brother even bet that she could fart as well. After traveling for several days, they finally arrived in London. Carnaby received a call from his mother, reminding him of a theater show he had that day. He had almost forgotten about it and rushed to the theater without noticing Thut and Princess hiding behind his vehicle. Thut, Princess Nefer, and his little brother followed Carnaby to the theater and surprised a group of people who recognized them from the Book of Egypt's history. They took pictures of them with a flashlight, revealing their true mummy forms, and ran off in panic. Armed with a camera, Thut, Princess Nefer, and his brother confronted Carnaby in the theater. They rushed towards him and shot him with the camera, not realizing it was just a regular camera for taking pictures. The theater crew intervened and brought them backstage, where they saw people dressed up as mummies. The crew assumed that Thut and Princess were mummy cosplayers and put them in a line with other cosplayers for a show. Thut and Princess started performing without realizing what was going on. Princess was impressed with how amazing the show was and even started singing along with the performers, pleading for the return of her ring. The audience was stunned by how beautiful Princess Nefer's voice was. The show was a huge success and Princess Nefer finally got her ring back. Thut fell in love with her during the performance. Carnaby saw Princess Nefer and couldn't believe his eyes. He chased after them to get the ring back, but they received help from a man named Ed, who was impressed by Princess Nefer's singing. Ed asked if Princess Nefer would like to sing for him, but Thut interrupted and insisted they had to return to their mainland quickly. Ed offered his address in case they changed their minds. Princess Nefer was disappointed with Thut because she had always dreamed of being a singer. Thut also wished the phoenix hadn't chosen him. His little brother reminded him that technically, he accidentally knocked down the phoenix with his boomerang. Thut and his brother hugged, and Princess Nefer didn't have to marry him anymore. They realized that the ring Princess Nefer received from the show was a fake one, and Thut worried about losing his eyes and tongue. Princess Nefer reassured him that everything would be alright, and they would find the ring in the morning. They arrived at Ed's house and asked to stay for the night in exchange for a song. As they settled down to sleep, Princess Nefer snored loudly, which Thut found difficult to handle. He went outside and expressed his love for her, acknowledging her strength, intelligence, and determination, but admitting that he was afraid of her snoring. Carnaby researched Egyptian history and found a symbol on the ring and on Princess Nefer, leading him to believe that living mummies were real. He excitedly told his mother about his discovery and predicted that the whole world would soon know his name. Ed records Princess Nefer's performance and offers them a shopping card for new outfits. They try on their new clothes, which fit them perfectly, and prepare to perform a live stream with Ed's song. Although Thut thinks they should leave soon, he changes his mind and supports Princess Nefer's desire to perform when he sees how much it means to her. During the performance, millions of people watch her live, and her song quickly becomes the number one hit. Carnaby, who also watches the show, discovers Princess Nefer's location and plans to capture her. Although Princess Nefer is delighted that her dream is coming true, Thud is unhappy because they still haven't found the ring. Suddenly, she is hit by an anesthesia bullet and captured by Carnaby's team. Thut wakes up from his sleep and realizes that Princess Nefer has been captured. He tries to chase after their car, but it's too late, and she is taken away. Thut blames Ed for this and tells him to stay out of his way, thinking he was one of Carnaby's team. Carnaby captured Princess Nefer to reveal her true identity to the world and sell tickets for his museum. Thud arrives at the museum and sees that all his stolen items are there. He is then trapped in a room with Princess Nefer by Carnaby. 
who plans to display them as mummies. Ed and Futt's little brother can't wait, so they decide to rescue them. Ed blocks the security cameras, and they break into the museum to rescue Futt and Princess Nefer, who are now in mummy form. I got it! It's them! They managed to escape, leaving Carnaby empty-handed. The siblings had no idea how to drive, but that didn't stop them from trying. With a little encouragement, little bro stepped up to the challenge, determined to get them out of this mess. Carnaby was a relentless pursuer, and no matter how fast they went, he was always close behind. But then, Foot spotted something up ahead, a ramp. He knew it was a risky move, but they had no other choice. Little bro hit the gas, and they shot towards the ramp at breakneck speed. But at the last second, Foot pulled a daring move, swerving the wheel and slamming on the brakes. It was enough to trick Carnaby into taking the ramp instead, and they managed to slip away. Boy. As they caught their breath, Princess demanded an explanation from Foot. Why was a chariot racer afraid of going fast? Futt chuckled ruefully and admitted that he was just more comfortable with horses than buses. It was a wild ride, but they made it out in one piece thanks to quick thinking and a little bit of luck. After the chaos at the museum, Futt and Princess needed to have a serious talk. They both apologized for the unexpected kiss and agreed that it was time to return to their own world. Fortunately, they had found the ring, and Ed suggested they take a plane to make their journey easier. Princess was in awe of Thut's bravery and thanked him for coming to her rescue. But Thut couldn't accept her praise. He revealed that he had retired from chariot racing because he was too afraid of speed. Princess comforted him, pointing out that he had risked his life to save her, which was the bravest thing of all. When they finally arrived back in their world, Princess and Thut had to say goodbye. Pharaoh was overjoyed to be reunited with his daughter, but Thut couldn't help feeling a little sad. As he looked at the ring, he knew that he wasn't the one who would marry Princess. But in his heart, he couldn't deny his love for her and the Phoenix. Just when they thought they were safe, Carnaby made a shocking return to the mummy's world. This time, he had his sights set on Pharaoh himself. The guards quickly alerted Pharaoh, and he ordered everyone to take cover while he activated the city's defenses. It wasn't long before Carnaby showed up, determined to capture Pharaoh. But Nefer stepped forward and took the blame, hoping to spare her father from harm. Meanwhile, little bro burst into Thut's room, urgently requesting his help. Princess was in trouble, and they needed him to rescue her and the king. Thut was hesitant at first, still feeling sorry for himself after his retirement from chariot racing. But little bro reminded him of who he was and how much he had to offer. When Thut arrived on the scene, he found Princess in a dangerous predicament. Carnaby had her cornered, and it looked like she might not make it out alive. But Thut wasn't about to let that happen. He raced him like a superhero, his chariot thundering across the sand as he scooped up Princess and saved the day. As Thut raced after Carnaby, he found himself lost in thought, remembering his past and the fears that had held him back. But he knew he couldn't let those doubts stop him now. He hopped onto a tractor and charged towards Carnaby, determined to save the king. With quick thinking and a little bit of luck, Thut managed to free Pharaoh from Carnaby's clutches. But then, disaster struck. A massive pit appeared in front of them, leaving Thut with nowhere to run. Thinking fast, Thut pushed Princess away to safety and tumbled into the pit with Carnaby. Miraculously, Thut survived the fall, clutching his wedding ring tightly. When they emerged from the pit, King Pharaoh was full of gratitude towards Thut for his bravery. And then, in a moment of true love, Thut asked Princess Nefer to be his wife. The adventure may have been over, but a new chapter was just beginning. The moral lesson from this movie is always check your vehicle's wheels before entering a chariot race, or you might end up accidentally marrying a princess and being chased by an archaeologist.